Uh, hey, I'm Atish, and I'm my presentation is on graph algorithms in practice. So just an overview on graphs. Graphs are a data structure which, which are very, very ubiquitous. For example, in Facebook, users are represented as vertices, and the friendship between many users are represented as edges. For Google Maps, locations are represented as vertices, roads are represented by edges, and the graphs are actually weighted graphs because when you want to go from one place to another, you have to account for terrain. So maybe like a, a weight of four might be snowing or traffic, while a weight of one might just be an empty road. And the entire Yelp website is a huge tree with the restaurant nodes connected to reviews, and those restaurant nodes are connected to categories. So we've learned three common searches, uh, depth, depth first pre-order search, uh, breadth first search, and depth, for, depth first post order search. And those are pretty useful in uh, traversing graphs. But there are a few other searches and sorts that are more mainstream and have like a like higher popularity. So one of them is a topological sort. And they're used to sort directed acyclic graphs. And it kind of works like um, depth, depth first post order search. Because you start with a random node, and you basically traverse all the children until you find a node, which is a leaf, meaning that they have no dependency on it. And once you find that, you can add that to a stack, and then you traverse back to the parents and check when you reach a parent, does that have any more dependencies? If it does, then you can add a parent to the stack. And if it does have a dependency, then you can go to that dependency and basically do the same thing and keep on checking. So here's like a visualization. Uh, so I can start with any node, such as 1, and 1 has a dependency of 2, 2 has a dependency of 4, 4 has a dependency of 5, 5 have a, has a dependency of 6, and 6 has a dependency of 3. And 3 is basically a node with no more dependencies on it, so we can add it to the stack. We can go back to its parent, 6, and 6's child 3 has already been added to the stack, so we can add 6. Then uh, 6's parent 5 has, uh, we can add 5 to the stack because 6 has already been added to the stack. And then we can go back to 4. And 5 and 6 have already been added to the stack, so we can add 4, and then we can add 2, and then we can add 1. So a huge use of topological, sort, or topological sorting is in uh, build systems, because like, whenever we run our code on the command line, right, many of, a lot of times our code relies on many kind of parent nodes, and those nodes are basically modules. And if one module is supposed to complete before the other does, we won't be able to run this project, and this can cause delays. So what your, basically your computer does is it organizes all of your programs into one entire graph, and then it topologically sorts your graph by finding, by basically finding all the children, adding them to the stack, and eventually you have a, you have a list of nodes, starting with a node that has um, no dependency on it. So you can basically you can basically run, you can basically run programs which don't use modules or aren't dependent on modules. So on an entirely different note, whenever we use like in, like our Uber apps or Google or Lyft, it's it makes it look so easy how it finds the shortest path between two locations, and I always wondered like how can it do that because there's so many different ways to get from a path, from a location A to a location B. So one sort that's used is where we can first we can first actually take the entire Google Maps app and put in a graph where we represent one node A as a starting location and another node F as a ending location. And basically each of these edges represents the pathway from the start to the destination. So there's like many different ways to get from A to F. And if you want to find basically the shortest path to get from A to F, you can use something called a Dijkstra's algorithm. So I have a visualization kind of I can show you. So if we refer to this example, our starting node is here and our ending node is here. And we want to find the shortest path from S to E. So these are all the nodes. We have our starting node and we have our end node. And these are all the nodes that are basically in the middle. So currently, we don't know the distance from any of these nodes from the starting point. We only know that from the starting point to the starting point, the distance is zero. And uh, you can notice that I put a smiley face here, because I just use that to separate the end node from every other node. 
So if we start here, and if this is our starting point, we want to evaluate that starting node's children. So that's A, B, and C. So A has a distance of 7 from the starting node, B has a distance of 2 from the starting node, and C has a distance of 3 from the starting node. So I can add that to a Q. So 2, 3, and 7. And I also need to add a property of where that node came from. So we, the direct parent of every node is listed here. So they all came from the starting point. So we've now basically exploited all of the starting point's nodes. So we can basically take that starting node and remove it from this priority queue and add it to basically a finished node stack, which is basically just going to be a stack of all the nodes we've explo exploited their children of. So we can basically remove the starting point and just focus on B, C, and A. And this queue is sorted by the distance being the smallest at the top and the distance being larger at the end. So with B, because currently B has a shortest distance from the starting point of 2, we want to exploit B's children now. So A, D, and H. So for H, it would be equal to 3 because 2 plus 1. D would be 4 plus 2, 6. And A is very interesting because A is a sibling of B and a sibling of, or A is connected to B and it's connected to S. And currently, we had set the distance of 7 for A. But when evaluating it from coming to B and then going to A, you can see it's 3 plus 2, 5. And 5 is shorter than 7, so we want to replace this value of 7 with 5. So this is what we do here. And I basically see where I came from is B. I keep on doing that, so now the smallest value is C. And I keep on exploiting its children until you're going to eventually reach G and then E. Because, and once you reach E over here, you can see that I came from G. And I told you that we had a stack where we were adding, whenever we removed a value from this priority queue, we added it to a stack. And those values ha also have a where I came from property to it. So we can connect all the where I came, where I came from properties together to basically find the path that led me from the starting point to the ending point. And that is basically going to yield a s the smallest distance from the starting point to the ending point. So a application of Dijkstra's algorithm is in uh, routers, because companies always want to find the path between two routers that's the shortest, because it costs them the least amount of money. And they don't want to basically go through many other nodes or other routers to get to the shortest path. So they use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path between two routers. And yeah, that's my presentation.